coming up on Ag Week TV. We'll get an update on trade, including the phase one deal with China. The North Dakota crop that puts some of the fun in summer feels some heat from COVID. Athletes learn how to use beef to power their performance on the football field. And Precision Ag moves forward at South Dakota State University. Welcome to Ag Week TV. I'm Michelle Rook. Trade took center stage this week with trade advisor Peter Navarro saying the phase one pact with China is over. That was quickly followed by a tweet from President Trump confirming the deal is fully intact. Tensions have been rising between the two countries and so is skepticism that China will uphold the deal. U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer testified before Congress and said China had purchased about $10 billion worth of ag goods, far shy of the $36.5 billion commitment. So fourth quarter buying will be key. Farmers like Kevin Scott hope China will step up U.S. ag purchases soon. It's the best hope for a recovery in U.S. ag markets hurt by the pandemic. It would be great to be able to have another uh, 50 cents or a dollar on the price of our beans right now so that we could uh, price the production that's coming down the line. But with the market conditions clause in the deal in COVID-19, he says that may be unrealistic. Yeah, there needs to be some leeway, and uh, if the agreement gets done uh, a half a year late or uh, three quarters of a year late, but yet still is is in play, uh, you can't really fault them a lot for that. At the same time, China officials have reiterated their promise. We have been told by the Ag Department all along that there are signs that they intend to fulfill their requirements under the under the deal. So I think if the, if the economy gets going again, maybe they'll at least make an attempt to get there. He says China needs U.S. ag goods, especially as they rebuild their swine herd after African swine fever. Yet with tensions high, they remain concerned. Certainly a, a real sensitive political environment right now, and, and we just hope agriculture doesn't end up being the victim of it again. China also banned poultry imports from a Tyson plant in Arkansas this week over COVID concerns. China is banning any grain and meat imports that aren't COVID free and has asked importers to provide certification those products are free of the virus. The American Soybean Association also welcomed the denial of an emergency motion to halt dicamba use. A panel of Ninth Circuit Court judges denied the motion so dicamba use will be permitted on the three vacated dicamba products. The court also refused to hold EPA in contempt for allowing existing stocks in hand to be used. The decision is an important win for EPA, but the legal battle is far from over. The court is permitting both BASF and Corteva to join Bayer as defendant interveners in the case. In other crop protection news, farm groups have prevailed in a court case in California challenging that state's Proposition 65 labeling requirement for glyphosate. The district court determined requiring Roundup to carry a warning label stating the product caused cancer was false and misleading. An appeal of the decision is expected. At the same time, Bayer issued a statement this week announcing it has decided to settle thousands of U.S. lawsuits around the company's Roundup products, plus dicamba drift litigation and PCB water litigation. They say the multi-billion dollar settlements are not an admission of the products being unsafe. COVID-19 is disrupting many outdoor activities and sports this summer. Those are prime for sunflower seed snacking, so the pandemic has been a game changer for the giant snacks company of Wapiton, North Dakota. Michael Pates visited the plant and has more in this week's Ag Week cover story. The first quarter of this year, we were up 71 percent, and then uh, COVID hit. The giant snack company out of Wapiton, North Dakota, relies on some of the social activity that COVID has ruined. The whole game has changed. The Shuler family started selling roasted and salted sunflower seeds in 1996. We sold them mainly to convenience stores starting out out of the trunk of their car. The company has grown steadily since then, especially when they started adding flavors like dill pickle. They sell about 200,000 bags of sunflower seeds a day. Much of that growth came after they started partnering with the Minnesota Twins. Up the middle, and then the Twins have taken the lead. And before long, most other teams wanted them too. So the players get what they want, and then the next thing you know, we're supplying probably 29 of the teams. 29, I think we're like messing two of them. But then COVID-19 brought most everything to a halt. 
While sales were crushed in April, they have slowly picked up through May and June. It all comes on top of a tough harvest last fall, but Jason Schuler and his brother Robert remain optimistic. Well, we had a terrible season growing, growing sunflowers in the Midwest. First time ever importing sunflower seeds in the United States. And that, that on top of this has proved to be an interesting year. I assume it'll be down a little bit because of some of the, the factors with, uh, with the pandemic, but uh, hopefully not too much. So the Sunflower Snack Company wants summer fun to return as soon as possible. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates in Wapiton, North Dakota. You can read more in the next Ag Week magazine or at agweek.com. Next week, we'll take a closer look at how the pandemic and the absence of large gatherings such as sporting events has impacted another summertime staple, the beer industry. One of the region's biggest auction companies is resuming live auctions. The Steffes Group moved all auctions online in March because of the pandemic. Scott Steffes says farmers are already resilient and used to adapting to change, so this was a fairly easy transition. The first live auction is July 7th, and Steffes says they're committed to making sure everyone feels safe at the event. He says live auctions are often an important milestone, so it's good to be there in person. A retirement is, is like a graduation or a wedding. It's part of the process, and we uh, really and miss the process as it is and getting to be around other folks, and hopefully we'll practice that social distancing and everybody enjoy uh, a good old-fashioned retirement auction. Through the end of the year, Steffes anticipates about 75% of their auctions will still be online. That will likely be closer to 50-50 next year. Up next on Ag Week TV, a longtime livestock family branches out into processing. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less firming and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Advanced Grain Handling is your regional dealer for grain handler dryers, bins, and accessories. With Grain Handler's continuous mixed flow drying systems, you're capable of high levels of grain dryer efficiency on all types of grain, including seed grain. Advanced Grain Handling also carries West Steel's quality stainless steel products for on-farm and commercial grain storage solutions. Advanced Grain Handling has licensed and trained service techs and a licensed electrical shop. Get a hold of Chad Kylo to find the perfect solution for your farm. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Keep your equipment in the field when you need it most with parts from Titan Machinery. We carry a full line of high-quality Case IH parts designed for optimal performance and durability. We also carry alternative parts options at lower price points with rugged designs for a great mix of affordability and performance to fit a wide variety of makes and models. Contact your local Titan Machinery location today or shop online at www.titanmachinery.com. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH parts leader. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. The Borgerding family has raised beef and dairy cattle in central Minnesota for 40 years, and now the next generation is branching out. Adam and his brothers also run a local butcher shop to sell their local high-quality beef. Emily Beal has more. Because I want it to be tied to agriculture and the farm. Um, 
but I did just want to get back to the, the small town. Adam Borgerding is an ag engineer in Fargo by day, but the rest of the time he's the proud owner of Bruder's Butcher. He had been looking for a way to stay close to his parents' dairy and beef farm. Buying this meat market in Melrose, Minnesota gave him that opportunity. Right walking in, we just liked the place and it fit what we were looking to do, um, not too far from the farm. They opened in February of 2019 and are keeping some local traditions alive while supporting their own family farm. One of the things that was really well known here is both the blood sausage and the smoked sausage. We, we kept those recipes and we, and we keep making those. The one thing that we changed right away was that we started using our beef from the farm. So all the beef that we um, that goes out the door here comes from our farm. For now, they take the cattle to Carlson Meats in Grove City, Minnesota for slaughter, but they hope to start doing that on their own farm. Although Adam is the sole owner, the whole family is involved. Youngest brother and store manager Lee says much of their skill was self-taught. We had a guy lined up to come in and help show us how to cut up an animal. Uh, that was unable to happen due to a snowstorm, so we learn from YouTube videos and books. The former owner, Marilyn Gable, still helps out in the shop. She says she's happy this small town business is still here. It's just so important to have these businesses in the area. Um, there, there aren't enough of them. In a time where consumers are interested in learning how their meat is sourced and where it comes from, this Minnesota family is dedicating to helping consumers along the way. With Ag Week, this is Emily Beal in Stearns County, Minnesota. The name Bruder Butcher is a tribute both to their German heritage and the brothers running the business. The coronavirus's effect on restaurants won't be as dire as some have predicted, according to a new report. The findings by Rabo Research find the worst of COVID-19's impact on U.S. food service is behind us. Consumer trend analyst Amit Sharma says people are still wary of eating out, so it will take longer for fine dining and full service to come back than fast food restaurants. So that could affect premium cuts of meat compared to ground beef. But overall, he says sales declines are expected to continue to moderate. The report says the big downturn in food service sales is even more notable because they've been growing much faster than retail sales for more than 25 years. But food service was also among the hardest hit by COVID-19. We are recovering. We will continue to get better. But uh, the decline today plus the recession will keep us down double digits for the next 12 months or so. Rabo Research is part of Rabo Bank, an ag and food focused bank based in the Netherlands. Construction is progressing on the Raven Industries Precision Agriculture Center in South Dakota State University. The $46 million facility is almost fully enclosed and construction crews are starting to work on the inside of the building. Everything's on schedule. Uh, we are going to have uh, the building completed um, late spring, early summer of 21, and, and we'll be doing the moving in during the summer, and we'll have students in there in the fall of 21. He says this is a game changer for the precision ag industry. SDSU is already at the forefront, offering the first in the nation's precision ag bachelor's degree. The center will just enhance that level of training they'll be able to provide students going into the profession. Coming up on Ag Week TV, advice on treating soybeans with white mold for maximum efficacy. And later, how some athletes are powering up with beef. Add more bushels to your hopper and money to your pocket by harnessing the power of air with Crary Wind Systems. Whether your beans are chest high or barely off the ground, Crary offers two solutions that add a constant stream of high velocity air to quickly feed crop back to the auger eliminating bunching, reducing shatter loss, and increasing your ground speed. Don't let crop conditions dictate your yield. Check out the Crary Air Reel or Crary Wind System today. Dynaflow is the ultimate high volume water management pump. Whether you're experiencing flooding, emptying sloughs, transferring ponds, or working on irrigation, the Dynaflow pump works in as little as 18 inches of water and is designed to move 3,000 gallons per minute. The Dynaflow lift pump is the perfect upgrade to your drain tile system. Using line shaft turbine pump technology, these pumps are made to last while operating efficiently. Dynaflow drain tile pumps can move up to 1,500 gallons per minute, up to 3,400 feet away. 
Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Change is constant in the ag industry. Stay ahead of the change with the latest ag news and insights from experienced ag journalists with an Ag Week membership. Get unlimited access to ag markets, tech trends, policy news and products, along with farm life insights, profiles, and more with light access. Upgrade to all access and get unlimited access to all of our FCC news sites, along with your award-winning ag news. Become a member today at agweek.com slash subscribe for the ag news you need. Our weather has been mostly favorable for crop development in the region and farmers trying to finish up the last planting efforts. Here's John with our AgriWeather Outlook. Weather portion of Ag Week TV now. The general outlook over the next couple of weeks, the heat will be returning. A lot of the region, northern plains, southern Canada, upper Midwest, central plains, a lot of this area is expected to be almost entirely warmer than average for the next two weeks, which carries us on into July. Uh, the drought areas of the United States, especially in the Great Plains, are expected to expand, except or unless we get a couple of Big storm complexes to get organized and sit over one area and really drop incredible rainfalls, which is possible, but for that we are relying on the naturally fickle nature of midsummer storms. Let's take a look at the U.S. Drought Monitor. Now this represents the deep moisture profile. This is not the top three inches of topsoil, so you may be quite dry where it shows you to be not that bad off. Most of the Corn Belt, though, is actually in pretty good shape. Deep moisture profile rise. There are some expanding areas of slightly dry weather in Indiana, but it's the northern plains that's really showing the drought, especially the western part of North Dakota and a strip through central Minnesota. Northwest Minnesota still mostly very wet because of recent heavy rainfalls, but the rest of eastern North Dakota and west central northwest Minnesota is either about okay or a little dry. And certainly in most areas, the top few inches have been a little dry. So we're going to depend upon timely rainfall. And we will have chances. Now the jet stream has gone very far north right now, which is allowing hot weather into the plains. More rounds of 90s early on this week. Most of the Midwest not as hot. Most of this will be 80s to maybe a few days around 90. Most of this in the bright red will be in the 90s. So that's some pretty hot weather. The heat will retreat a little bit around midweek. That's going to bring some thunderstorms into this area in the slightly cooler weather. And it will remain a little cooler this week. But as we approach Independence Day weekend, it is expected to get fairly warm again. The next week, the first full week in July, will continue to be warm to hot throughout the Great Plains. A lot of this in orange in the 80s to around 90, and more weather well into the 90s is certainly looking somewhat likely. Precipitation-wise, midsummer, this is really a difficult forecast. We're relying almost entirely on models. No gut feeling really helps you out very much here. Central Canada looks wet with stormy weather. Looks like a belt from Iowa down through Illinois. Illinois looks pretty wet. The rest of this, there will be some heavy storms, but they will be fairly sporadic. You'll have to get lucky and get under the right clouds. The second week of the forecast on into July, Northern Plains still looks somewhat stormy. Also the southern states, but how much rain you get will depend on the luck of thunderstorm action with each round of storms. But the weather will continue to be warm, so these areas will need some rain. 
When it comes to grain storage and handling solutions, one call does it all. Gateway Building Systems, the number one Brock bin dealer in the U.S. is locally owned and provides turnkey convenience with factory direct product, complete design services, and in-house construction. Now is the perfect time to take advantage of discounts on Brock solid bins, grain dryers, and aeration systems. For more information, go online to gatewaybuilding.com or call 1-800-747-4499. Twenty twenty has started off where twenty nineteen left off, with a lot of uncertainty and concern. Is your farming operation ready to take the volatility this year has to offer? Do you have a marketing plan in place to take advantage of opportunity? Are you finding it hard to separate the noise from the news? Talk to the professionals at Martinson Ag. We can help you make sound risk management decisions that will help your operation survive during these unusual times. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. Egg Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Egg Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Egg Week podcast is the show for you. Ag Week TV Soy Insight, brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Conditions could be ripe for white mold in soybeans in the northern Corn Belt this season. NDSU's Michael Vunch studies soybean diseases at the Carrington Research Center. He says some growers had cool, wet conditions last fall and again this spring, and now he's warning them to watch for white mold. It develops if weather is cool and wet during the bloom period, usually July or August, when the plants are in R2 through R4 development. A field is also more vulnerable if it has had white mold in the past. It can significantly reduce yield and seed quality. He says if you see white mold, it's too late to treat it, so it's vital to spray fungicide at just the right time and droplet size. A heavy canopy can prevent some of the spray from getting to the plant, so in that case, growers should use coarse droplets. If the canopy is still open, growers should use fine to medium droplets. You spend the exact same money and you get 50% more yield bump just by getting your timing right. And then you can further double your performance by getting your droplet size right. Bunch emphasizes getting it right the first time as spraying a second time will likely not be cost efficient. You can find more information on the Carrington Research Center's website. Click on Plant Pathology. The Sanford Sports Science Institute and the South Dakota Beef Industry Council are teaming up again for this year's football season on the Build Your Base with Beef program. The new schools were recently announced, and this year's program has been expanded to include nearly 1,500 South Dakota athletes. Athletes from 35 selected South Dakota high schools plus SDSU and USD will benefit from the third year of the pilot partnership as Beef continues to power football players. So as part of the program, we were really using beef as a key component for that primary recovery protein. So after athletes practice or play in games or work out, they need to repair their muscle, and beef is a key protein source for that. The sports nutrition and training program utilizes beef and works with athletes and their families on building a successful sports season through a healthy lifestyle. And so it's showing them the importance of having that essential protein like beef, the timing of when to have it for recovery, and also bringing the whole community into it. So it's creating good habits at a young age. Parents are also more confident about feeding their athletes and coaches are seeing results. 
anecdotally, we've gotten great feedback about strength and recovery and how people are feeling and their overall confidence with their nutrition. This year, the program has an updated website for easier accessibility to resources. The council's had such success with the program, they're also looking to expand to other states. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, we'll tell you how people are helping farm rescue by drinking beer. Luckin Trucks and Parts sells quality used parts for all makes and models. With over 50 acres of trucks and parts and new inventory arriving daily. Family owned and operated since 1966, Luckins specializes in the sale of quality used medium to heavy duty truck parts as well as pre-owned trucks, trailers, and construction equipment. If it's on a truck, we got it. Call us today and let us get you your part. Be ready for the challenging field conditions you face with the Summers VRT Renegade. With on-the-fly adjustment, including blade angle from 0 to 19 degrees, the VRT Renegade gives you unprecedented flexibility for the field results you want, spring or fall. Go to summersmfg.com or visit your local dealer to learn more about the VRT Renegade and North America's broadest line of tillage equipment from North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing. When planting season comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. This spring, keep your planters rolling with a user-friendly seed tender from North Star Ag. We have seed tenders for every size operation from Meridian, Unverfirth, and J&M. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery. Uptime is crucial. Keep your crew in the field longer with a fuel trailer from Thunder Creek. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used inventory or give us a call. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than 3 billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Did you happen to see the bush light cans decorated with corn? It may be too late. The limited edition cans are selling out even faster than Anheuser-Busch expected. Bush Light is the company's best-selling beer and is the largest brand that's made with corn. One dollar from each case goes to Farm Rescue's expansion into Kansas, up to $100,000. That's going to make a tremendous impact for our operations and allow us to help even more farmers and ranchers in crisis, which is what we're here to do. Doug Rustemeyer, owner of DS Beverage Distributors in Moorhead, Minnesota, says the cans are a great tribute to farmers. We love our farmers, right? And Bush Light is made with corn. And so what a better tribute to our farmers than to make a package that has corn right on the label. And the can actually says uh, for, for the farmers. So that's kind of where it started as a just a summer one-time shot package, and, and uh, people are loving it. Since it started in North Dakota in 2005, Farm Rescue and its volunteers have helped nearly 700 upper Midwest farm families keep operating in times of illness or other crisis. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com and be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Have yourself a great and safe week.